Hello, everyone, and welcome to Snap Take. It's Glazer of Snap Judgments, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone. We've got a ton of stuff to talk to you about today. This is going to be a big one, so buckle in. We've got this amazing Conquest deck. We've got your questions. We've got just an absolute massive amount to talk about. So before we get started, we're offering 15 season passes in our giveaway. We do the biggest giveaway in all of Marvel Snap each and every season. You can get Black Swan. I know it's showing the old numbers. Sorry, Black Swan is now a 3-5, not a 2-3. Same ability makes your one-cost cards cost zero next turn. It's a non-reveal ability, so it can be stopped by things like Cosmo. But it's still going to be seemingly very powerful. I think it's significantly worse as a 3-5, even with that better stats than as a 2-3. Um... Largely because it can't be played on four with Falcon, which is just like an OP turn five. Now it has to be played with Falcon on turn five or um, alone on turn five, and that means Super Giant counters it. And I think that's a major, major, major difference that's going to change how the card plays fundamentally. So I don't like Black Swan nearly as much as I did, but I still think it's a good card, if not a fantastic one. Plus, you can get it for free. All you have to do is sub, like, and comment. Please hit those buttons. We'd appreciate it. It helps us grow. Um... Sub, like, and comment on any video from last Wednesday to tomorrow's video where we're going to go over the top 10 tips, the best ways to hit infinite. A lot of you are struggling, especially in the 90s, according to my comments. So I'm going to tell you how to get through the 90s right at the end of the season or into the new season, which kicks off on Tuesday. In addition, we're giving away five more passes on Twitter, so check out our Twitter. The tweet is in the description to this video. It's our pinned tweet. And then we're going to be giving away the last five next week in a bunch of videos. So again, keep at it. Also, we're at 8,700. When we hit 9,000 subs, we will be giving away, you guessed it, some more season passes. So again, keep it here. All right, we are also starting the Snap Judgments League. We're kicking the league off on March 2nd. So First, I'm going to give you the downside, then all the upsides. Ready? The downside, you have to give us a dollar on the Patreon for it. Patreon.com slash snapjudgments. One dollar, you give us one dollar, and you're in the tournament. Cool. We'll send the instructions here on the Patreon, on the Discord, all over the place as soon as um, we're a little bit closer to that date. Probably around the second week of February is when we're looking at for that. Um, how the tournament works is you get put into a pod of 32 players. In each and every pod, there will be some major, major content creators. In every video, we've been announcing two to three. So check videos starting uh, this past Wednesday with the giveaway, and you'll be able to see what creators. Um, we're going to announce three creators today. They are Shuri Enjoyer, Hella Enjoyer, and Husky Puppies. These are three top, I mean, Shuri Enjoyer is like top five, but these are three of the top like 30 ranked players in Marvel Snap. Um, they're going to be competing in this tournament. No guarantee they'll be in your pod. No guarantee anyone will be in your pod, but we will have an awesome number of pods. Um, hopefully we're trying, it's actually more difficult than it looks, to get them sorted by time zone. How it works is in your pod, you play one game a week. At the end of that uh, one game a week, we have a king of, uh, king of pod. That king of pod gets a season pass. They win, congrats. And they also move on to, um, for bigger prizes, a top tournament. And that top tournament is going to be um, like the cut, the single elimination rounds of this tournament. Cool. We're going to be revealing more great creators tomorrow, so stay tuned here. Check out patreon.com slash snapjudgments. This is open to everyone. We've already got over 50 content creators. We've got over um, 50 regular players that just want to test their metal. How often, how many games do you play? Can you say you play against some of the best players in the game, some of your favorite content creators in a major tournament? Well, you can at Marvel Snap, thanks to this league, so check it out. All right. I think we've given you a good enough reason to subscribe. I like to hope so at any rate. We also give you three brand new decks every single weekday here on this channel. In addition, we bring you all the Marvel Snap news, the best decks, everything before all of the other creators get to it. We bring you everything. Hit sub. Help us reach more people. We're fighting that YouTube algorithm. It's really not easy to, for a channel this size to compete with the... Uh, big channels of the world, but if you're willing, we'd appreciate your support and your likes, subs, and comments really help. All right, our format for the day is, we've already talked about the first few, we're going to go to question of the day, then we're going to look at Devilish's deck. Devilish is a phenomenal player and a friend of ours who went 13-1 and in Infinity Conquest with this deck. Then we're going to look at my Snap Season Recap. We're going to look at a deck from the current number 10 player in the world, Aoi. Then, um... We're going to remind you that the podcast is out a little bit later today 
And we're going to talk about my wife's little business. Sorry, I know it's not a snap thing, but she asked me to, and I love my wife, so I'm going to. And then we're going to look a little more closely at a Shuri Enjoyer deck that we talked about briefly on Friday. We'll end, as always, with shop and shoutouts. All right, quick reminders. This is a daily snap show, three decks every day, and numerous recurring segments. Let us know which segments are your favorites. The custom cards, for example, are every Wednesday. Uh, one more day for the giveaway. So you comment today, comment tomorrow. Giveaway is then done. We will announce winners. Um, I'm hoping Tuesday, but in order for it to like time work out, it might actually be Wednesday's video. But giveaway winners are announced soon, I promise. Don't forget to sign up for the Patreon. If you're interested, check the channel fact. We have a series four and five tier list, a big card acquisition guide to maximize how you, uh, you're you spending in the game, and so much more in our channel fact in the description. But more importantly, we have a huge giveaway sheet in the description to this video. Uh, I'm announcing that specifically at this time of year because it's every active giveaway in Marvel Snap, thanks to our friend Banshee. With that sheet, you can find basically every chance you have in the whole game to win free stuff and find great creators in the process. Cool. If you need help, we're on the Marvel Snap Zone Discord. We, in fact, just my, uh, blah, 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 blah. we just migrated over to the general area of the Marvel Snap Zone Discord. So if you're in the Marvel Snap Zone Discord in the like general area, just say hello, and I and many others will be happy to give you a hand. All right, questions of the day. Lucas Warm, traditional move, keeps getting buffs. What would it take to really get going? So I think a card that... Um, maybe cannot be moved, but a card that fundamentally is like an ongoing ability that benefits. I think it would have to be a two-ish cost card that just gains plus two power or so for each card you've moved this game. I think that one extra power spike, that one static power spike would go a really long way toward making move powerful. Ultron 4 wants to know about Kitty, Angela, and Elsa. What happens if they're buffed? So what happens is Zabu's play rate goes down. Right now, Zabu is really the only thing you want to be doing early in the game that has enough power to really matter late game. That's why every deck we talk about right now is a Zabu deck. With that the case, um, no Kitty, Angela, and Elsa mean that if you're... Like, if you can't do early game powerful stuff, you might as well do late game powerful stuff, right? You might as well ramp to late game powerful stuff, and Zabu is the cheapest way to do that with four as an incredibly important cost slot. Now, if these cards are buffed, we see less Zabu because there's something else powerful to do in the early game. I think that's ultimately a benefit to Marvel Snap, to the community. That is something that we should all want to see happen. It's, it's certainly something I would like to see happen. Um... My working guess for Elsa's buff is that she's going to go to 3-3 or 3-4, and then she's going to give plus 2 like she did after her nerf, um, after her first nerf. I'm under the impression, I'm, I have the assumption that Elsa and Loki's nerfs were meant to be temporary during the existence of Blob, and now that Blob is gone, they're being reverted. I'd like to see Kitty get a little buff, but Kitty's been nerfed so many times, largely because she's so hard to balance. I think they're going to leave her in a decent place, but there needs to be another early game powerful card. Cow Cambria asks if I like sports and what's team, which teams I prefer. So I only really like basketball anymore. Um, I don't have a team. I was a Knicks fan, but I hate James Dolan. The second he sells the team, I will be a huge Knicks fan again. Um, I have cable vision. I have optimum. I hate James Dolan so much. He's such a prick. But um, generally speaking, basketball is my favorite sport. I watch basically any and all professional basketball. I don't really like college, but I love pro basketball. Uh, I'm, I've spent most of my life until I was like 36, 37, I'm 42, as a Packers fan. And one day, upon, as I was watching and not enjoying myself at all, I realized I didn't actually like football. I watched all my life because I'm an American and everyone watched football around me. And it was a thing to do at the bar on Sundays. But I didn't enjoy it, so I just sort of stopped, and I've never missed it. Um, I liked baseball, but they tore down Yankee Stadium. They built a shopping mall. I know it's not a shopping mall, it's a stadium, but that stadium is a shopping mall more than it is a baseball stadium. Where Yankee Stadium was, I grew up in the Bronx, and it drove me crazy. I decided to root for the Rays during the Rocco Baldelli era, but I slowly fell out of love with baseball once I was no longer passionate about the Yankees. And now I watch like three games a year, so just basketball at this point in my life. If you'd like your questions read out in a video soon, please leave some in the comments. All right, our first deck. This is the thirteen and one in Infinity Conquest. That's absurd. It won. Um, it went four and one, right? Or sorry, uh, three and one in Infinity Conquest. It lost on game four, and then Devilish 
one in Infinity Border, went to sleep, woke up in the morning, and then won another Infinity Border back to back. That's wild. This deck is great. I tried it out. It's really smooth. Uh, I like armor a lot better than Kara in this deck. I know Kara can be very good, right? But if you get armor and then you drop Lockjaw in that lane, for example, you're in just really good shape as a general rule. Um, you can also armor a separate lane where you think you're going to drop like a Scar later. Or if you don't see Lockjaw, you can play your Thor or Beta Ray into that armor lane. And it's just really, really nice. It's a very powerful play. Opponents have little to do about that. Lockjaw is obviously very strong right now. Um, this is running the full Lockjaw package with Wasp, Jane, uh, Thor and Beta Ray. Yes, you do need Beta Ray for this deck. I think it mostly works without Beta Ray, but it's significantly better with him. Uh, Scar, likewise, is very, very, very good here and super strong. If you'd like my last day review on Scar or my last day review on Beta Ray, that will be in tomorrow's video. All right, Scar can be She-Hulk. You lose a lot from that exchange, but Scar can be She-Hulk. You really, really do need Beta Ray Bill, I think. Um, if you didn't have Beta Ray Bill, you're probably sticking Jubilee in. You lose, a, again, a reasonable amount with that exchange, but it's doable, I guess. Uh, at that point, you're playing an earlier version of Lockjaw that wasn't really meta, though. Like, Beta Ray Bill and uh, Scar are what turn this from a fine deck that you can play into a meta deck. So, you can find our friend Devilish, who made this deck, who's been rocking with this deck at twitch.tv slash devilishplay. Alright, so turn one pass, turn two armor, turn three lockjaw plus wasp over Thor. Although if you played armor and you already have Jane, I could see playing Thor over lockjaw without wasp. Turn four is beta ray bill, uh, generally over Dracula. Again, we're assuming a Jane. If you don't have Jane, I could, and you do have a bunch of very heavy costed cards, including infinite in hand, I could see dropping Dracula first. Turn five, Jane, if you've dropped either Thor, if not, you guessed it, Dracula. Um, I don't like Beta Ray on 5 more than Dracula, but if you must, you must. Because, like, your worst case for Dracula is he chucks Beta Ray, right? And then he's 7, and Beta Ray would only be 6. 7 is more than 6. So, turn 6 is whatever big makes sense. Dracula and armor into Jaw often work. So, like, you drop Dracula in one lane, put armor into Lockjaw in one lane. You can also very, very often drop Odin on some hammers, and that is a very strong play. Cool. That's how to play this one. Quick hip count, and then we're moving on. We got the hip wasp, the hip jaw, the hip Dracula, the hip infinaut, the hip Odin, the hip Magneto. We're at a six hipper. You love to see it. I think that this deck is also very aesthetically pleasing. Let me know if you agree or disagree. All right, my season recap. My most played card was Zabu. Zabu goes in freaking everything right now. Uh, all my cards have gold borders, so I'm very annoyed that they decided to give all my cards blue borders for this, but what are you going to do? Uh, Zabu is easily my most played card. That's not a surprise. Zabu is, again, in every freaking deck right now. Um, my most split card is Bishop because I got the hit Bishop, and I'd really like a cool gold background. I've yet to get that gold background. I've got black and white twice, but I'm going to keep splitting, so Bishop might be here again next month. Uh, the most seen location is Limbo, whatever. The most, the card I won most when I played is it is Wave, and that is the Hell Enjoyer deck. That's the only real place I played Wave. I didn't play a lot of the Thanos decks that ran Wave, so I played the Hell Enjoyer deck a fair amount, and when I was Waving, I was getting my combo off without worrying about magic is fundamentally why I was winning. I was going Wave into either um, Onslaught or Tribunal, and then dropping Iron Man or jubilee slash iron lad into um the other of the six drops and that was just enough to win most of the time so that combination let made wave a really big winner uh my most my most winning card in deck is snow guard and uh then that should be exactly equal to loki because i don't think i played uh snow guard in a non-loki deck but every loki deck i play has snow guard and i've won 80 freaking percent of my loki games this season so um that's wild. I'm not surprised. I, I maintain Loki is completely overpowered still, and people just aren't playing it enough, but hey, what are you going to do? And my most uh, winning location is Sinister London, which is makes sense. I play Sinister London, I feel like, very well. Every time it comes up, I'm really happy. Is it my favorite location? I mean, it's definitely up there. I really, really enjoy it. I like the strategy of trying to fill a location, but not fill a location too fast. Um, I just think it's a very, very fun location. I like it. So that's my season recap. If you'd like to find yours, check the news tab of your game. It's there. All right. So we've got our Owie Nim Destroy. This is our next deck. This is super cool. I'm enjoying the crap out of playing this. I, cer I certainly did not see this 
coming. Um, again, Howie is the number 10 ranked player in Snap. You have like three real play lines here, maybe more, but I can count three, eh, four-ish, I guess, but two are the same. Um, you go Shuri or Wong into Panther. If you've got Magic out, you can Odin that, and then you can drop Tribunal and just have a bajillion power all over the board. It's really nice. Um, if you go, sorry, by the way, if you go Magic, um, yeah, 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 you can go Magic, uh, Wong, Mystique, Panther, and just do that that way if you would prefer. It's just there's a lot of ways to get a crap ton of power. You can get Wong out early with either Zabu or Psylocke, and then you can go Shuri into Black Panther um, for a crap ton of power. And your opponent's just going to assume you're going to, um, like, as lo especially on ladder, they're going to assume you're going to Zola that, and you should have priority, so they're going to use their big stuff in other places. And you just go, nope, thanks, though. Uh, tribunal that all over the place. The other big play here is you make yourself a nice big Nimrod, um, ideally with Shuri, but like, hey, if you just get a regular old Nimrod and you have Wong out, you can drop Destroyer into Wong and then make yourself a bajillion uh, Nimbots all over the place. If you can do that with Shuri, um, if you can go Shuri, Wong, and Nimrod, and then you can play Destroyer, you just win. Like, this deck is wildly fun that way. Um, I think this is great. Like, this is really, really good. It's got uh, just a bajillion ways to play really cool games of Marvel Snap. And it wins a lot because Owie is currently the number 10 ranked player in the game. But um, unfortunately for this expensive deck, every single high uh, series card is needed. The closest to being replaceable is Ravona. There's not another card that does what Ravona does. But Ravona is really, like, literally here for two cards. She's here for Shuri and she's here for Mystique, which are nice but not pivotal cards, right? Um... Again, she's good for these changes, but, like, not an important for them. All right. Uh, Aoi is, again, number 10 ranked with this completely wild deck. Aoi is French. If you're willing to find Aoi, you can find Aoi on YouTube at AoiCast. Um, but you probably have to know French or use subtitles. All right. So turn one, pass. Turn two, Zabu is generally better than Silex, generally better than Ravona. Turn three, Wonger Shuri. Turn four, Wonger Shuri, or Magic occasionally. Magic is also fine on turn three. Turn five, Panther or Nimrod on the Wong or Shuri. Turn six, if you played Wong, uh, Destroyer on it for Nimrod. Or Onin on Panther if there's a turn seven coming. If there's not a turn seven coming, drop Living Tribunal. And then turn seven is basically always Living Tribunal if there is one. Cool. That's how you play this complete monstrosity of a deck. It is so strong and so cool. All right, quick hip count. We got Psylocke, Zabu, Ravona. We got Shuri... Wong, Panther, Nimrod, Odin, Tribunal, Destroyer. That's 10 you heard right. If we could figure out how to get a hit Magic and Mystique, we're almost there. We're almost at the natural full hip deck. Uh, someone asked earlier if you could build if you could build a like tier one deck of all hips. Not yet, but we're real, real close. We can build really good decks of all hips, just I don't think we can get quite to full tier one. All right. So really quick, on the Marvel Snap Zone YouTube later today, we've got a podcast coming out. It's on the Marvel Snap YouTube or a podcatcher of your choice. We have Felicity and Tucker on our episode. It is a great episode. We talk about how to buff underplayed and weaker cards a lot. We talk about um, Beta Ray Bill and what we think of it, what we thought of the OTA. Please check it out. You'll enjoy it. Also, my wife has a small business, if you're interested, for Valentine's Day. It's called thecrystalbee.com. She makes her own jewelry, sells it there. Uh, you can find it at thecrystalbee.com or on Instagram at the period crystal period B period 21 on Instagram. Check it out on either one of those. Um, you can see that, like, one of her pieces of jewelry on the right here. This is, this is like, the homepage of her website. Anyone who's willing to, you obviously don't have to, but if you're looking for a nice little piece of jewelry for Valentine's Day, it doesn't hurt to look, right? Okay, our last deck, I told you we'd be talking about this, is the Shuri Enjoyer Annie Billy. It's a Nihilus and uh, Beta Ray Bill. So it is phenomenal. Um, I like this better than the Shuri one that he climbed to like the top four rank with that we talked about last Monday. This deck has um, just a ton of play. You're basically deciding between game plans with Werewolf tying them together, but like it's not a big deal if you go sort of half in on multiple game plans as long as you don't end up with a void wrecking your life. Um, Yellow Jacket is unbelievable against Ghost. 
because as they try and shang that sentry, you make it have nine power, and then they are just sad. So sad. If so you can do that as you're bouncing werewolf around and you end up leaving werewolf somewhere good, then you probably won. Um, the Sarah decks that are everywhere have no real answer to a Nihilus. They just sit there. They, they've all cut Killmonger, so they just sit there sadly with their hoods um, and their um, negative 10 voids. The negative 10 voids also do a great job at screwing up Miss Marvel. Um, Thor, Beta Ray, and Sentry are just too much power for them to potentially shang all of it werewolf is too much power they bet and they have to guess right for their shadow king which is a one-third chance spider ham takes a card out of their hand nico um has three cards to make like blow up or uh turn into demons or give and it can give anything plus two and benefit like this deck is so 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 good nico by the way with the zero cost is just insane just if you have Nico and Yellow Jack, you just wait for the perfect thing, and then you're very, very happy that you did so. All right, um, Spider Ham and Nico can be Ice Man and Forge. You lose a bit, but not terribly much. I think Nico's a bigger loss than Ham. I'm not sure Ham is better than Ice Man. Zebu is needed in freaking every deck at this point. Buy Zebu if you can. Mobius can be Ghost. Um, Mobius could also be Quake, just fine. Quake and Ghost are the two like good tech cards that Mobius is in competition with right now in that general cost slot. Annihilus and Beta Ray Bill are complete, complete, utter requirements for this deck. All right, so Shuri Enjoyer is, as of my writing this, the number two ranked player in Marvel Snap, playing decks such as this one. So turn one, Hood over Ham. Turn two, Zabu is way better than any of the ones. Uh, turn three, Werewolf is generally better than Beta Ray, is better than Thor, better than Sentry, better than Mobius. And as always, your Thor values change if Jane is already in hand. Um, and your sentry values change if analysis is already in hand. Turn four is basically the same thing as turn three, except now you can definitely play a four. Uh, turn five, Jane if hammers or analysis, and turn six is all the stuff you can with werewolf. Also, if you played Jane, but also played, for example, sentry or hood earlier, you can drop analysis and a one on the last turn of the game. Cool. It's very strong. Like, very strong. This deck is excellent. I'm really proud of the decks we're bringing you here today. All right, we have almost no hips here, right? We've got our Ham, Zebu, Mobius, and Annihilus, but we got our cool Jacinto Sentry, so we're not too sad about that. And our comfort cover Werewolf, and as always, Throg, so we're still doing good on the pretty cards front for this deck. All right, we have two days of shop. Looks like I got a Flaviano takeover. Uh, unfortunately... Okay, so we have Claw, I have a hip. Warlock, I have a hip. Spectrum, I have a hip. Galax, I have a hip. Odin, I have a hip. Watu, I have a puppy. Lockjaw, I have a hip. Thanos um, is not... I don't like Venomized Scrum. Sorry. I know a lot of you do, but I really don't. So I was just like, wait, this is expensive and not for me. Next. So in the next day, we had um, a Zola, I have a hip. A Rogue, I have three Rogues, including a new one I haven't shown you yet, but I will soon. Um... I like the Jim Lee Professor X, but like, I feel like, I don't know, there's something off about his clothes. I don't know what it is, but I don't enjoy it. Um, I have like four Storms, like four Magnetos. I just spent $100 on a Hella and like 30 bucks on a Doom, and I have both a Hip and a Jacinto for a Carnage. So we were good on these two days of variants. Not that that Doom isn't great, not that that Storm isn't great, not that that Hella isn't great, not that that Magneto isn't great. I just have other versions already. So I'm perfectly happy with them. Why waste 20 bucks when you have other versions to play? All right, certain tiers of support on our Patreon come with on your thanks. We got Models, Pretty Chill, Father Newman, Inc., No Flex, Mandatory Burnout, Matt Conduit23, Good Dog Gamer, Keredix Lee, Mikey Hijinks, DG Winfield, Cables, Rob Silverman, Matt H., Abigail Gieslin, Direwolf, Icolaris, X Force V, Jay Never Eat, Spike Jones, Koi Ray, Louis Anton as Jane McDon Jamie JD McDonaldino, and the Homie Min. These decks are wildly good. Like, this is one of those days where I'm just like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. These these decks are the stuff. So there's, um, we always do our best to bring you the best decks on this channel. But sometimes people are just on fire with making new stuff. This is an on fire with making new stuff day. Go play these decks. And while you're at it, hit sub. We got ways to get you to infinite tomorrow. And if you would like to compete in that tournament or just like to support the channel, check out the Patreon. Also, don't forget about the Crystal Bee. My wife's a really cool person. I love her a lot. It'd be nice if we got her a little bit of support. Y'all good? I'm good. See you tomorrow for another snap take.
Peace.